So like Vanessa said, I'm going to be talking about gunpowder maps, um, in this case for kids. Uh, uh, <laughs> it was a fun process to learn about gunpowder maps last year in Minneapolis. So I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, Minneapolis in 2015, um, and then Foundry, an art gallery and co-working space uh, I started in Corvallis with a couple friends, and how that engaged the community in new ways to think about space and maps um, when they otherwise would not have. So the gunpowder mapping workshop that Matt put on last year, um, was there anyone here who w was attending? Attended? Yeah, we got, yeah, at least three or four. Um, was really fun. Everyone who was there had a, a literal blast. Um, <laughs> Matt led several people through the process of how it works, um, but I'm gonna do that really briefly because I only have 10 minutes and I'm already talking too slow. So it works by cutting out a stencil. You pick a geographic area, um, make a map. In this case, this is a river network. Um, these are from Matt's notes. Uh, cut out that in a stencil. Um, here is my stencil that I was cutting out in the workshop. And then you get some plywood, um, some paper that you want to print on, put the stencil on top of that, sprinkle a nice dose of gunpowder on top of that stencil, uh, put a cover paper over that and another piece of plywood, uh, some bricks, as you see in this image, and then you light it. Oops. As long as it'll play. Come on, video. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Uh, that smoke's just coming towards you. You can just. Uh... <laughs> and this is this is from the workshop. Let me sh let me go back to this other one because uh, it wasn't showing on my computer, but. Uh... Apparently it shows on the screen. There you go. So that, that was actually me, and then running safely away. You can't see just out of screen is a uh, fire extinguisher. <laughs> Safety first. So the two bricks help weigh down the plywood to keep the gunpowder in there, but not keep it so compacted or constricted that you create an actual explosion. You're just basically, basically igniting the gunpowder and being very careful not to actually contain it um, so much and create an explosion, although it does look a little explosive. And it was really fun. I, I liked the process. There was, there was something about it that felt good to me and, and a simplicity to it. Um, so I thought I would do it at home, which led me to websites like this one, um, where you can get muzzle loader gunpowder which is what you need to make these kinds of maps. And then I started to get packages in the mail with labels like this, <laughs> and this, and weird looks from my mailman. <laughs> and then I started thinking about the process and what it meant and why I found it so engaging. I looked into uh, Sai Guo Xiang, who is one of the artists that's most famous for doing this kind of work. Um, he just had a, there's a documentary on Netflix called Sky Ladder that just came out that's really, uh, really good and worth checking out. He's been doing this kind of work for decades. Um, but a quote from the documentary uh, kind of nails a part of the appeal to me. Mostly I work in digital mapping. Um, there's all these, like what tools am I gonna use? What, I'm not gonna even list all the Mapbox maps in JS, Node, uh, PostGIS, whatever, all these things. And this, the quote is, the purity of material, reduction of the practice, so you come to its essence. Um, and that's really what it felt, and it was really just simple, thinking about space um, in new and interesting ways. So I created my, the first one I wanted to do, and I think I was a little overambitious. This is 24 by 36. It's the Columbia River Basin. I started cutting it out with an X-Acto knife out of paper. I made this kind of tapered river network to cut out. Um, and then I used a lot of gunpowder on top of it. And so that's the gunpowder sitting on top of it. Um, and uh, here's my little can over my 24 by 36 and a lot of gunpowder. And this video isn't as long as some of the other ones, 
Um, and that's partially because it really <laughs> bounced and there was a lot of smoke and I stopped recording and made sure nothing was on fire. <laughs> Um, and that my neighbors knew that I was about to do that after I'd already done it. Um, so I scaled back a little bit, smaller piece. Um, and this one is a, an appropriate size ignition. I haven't been doing sound effects here, I'll try to... <laughs> because it really isn't a boom, it is, it is more of a foomp. So meanwhile, and we'll see some results of some of that work um, in Corvallis, I, I worked from home for eight years. I'd gone on, on, alternate between coffee shops, my house, um, trying to focus in different ways, co-working space. And uh, a couple friends of mine and I decided to open a co-working space in Corvallis. Um, to be called Foundry, and we, had, we were pretty ambitious, and we started by opening a small art gallery, partially because we wanted to get the word out, partially because we needed a place to work. Um, this is how it started. It's only about eight feet by 25 feet, really tiny, but with a giant window to the main street. It took a lot of work and paint, and there was grinding of walls and getting to the cement, and it was late nights, and I got crazy, and I started dressing like the ladder. Um, <laughs> but, then uh, we, we opened, and one of our first shows uh, was the result of the workshop with, uh, with Matt in Minneapolis, um, and it came packaged nicely with this uh, wonderful, there's a word for what this is, but the call out for where the map is and all the contributors, so anyone here, you might be able to pick your name out if it's big enough. Um, it looked really great in our pocket gallery, and I had some examples of my contribution, the tiles I made, the stencils, the cover sheets, and the actual print. Um, and that combined with this, which was the result of the 24 by 36 Columbia River one, and because there was so much gunpowder, the stencil was essentially just disintegrated. Um, but this is a result I got, and it's kind of neat. It doesn't really resemble too much the uh, Columbia River Basin, unless you know it really well, um, but it came out with some, some wonderful detail um, in the intricate parts. This was one of my favorite ones. This was kind of a map marker, um, you know, connecting to my web map work um, and the smoke pattern in there I really, uh, really loved. This was a more programmatic uh, map with a, a base print of the Pacific Northwest and the Cascadia subduction zone represented in a line there. And I was experimenting with controlling the directionality of the explosion and the smoke kind of going towards the destruction heading towards the Pacific Northwest. There's a few of those. So we opened, it was March, it was St. Patty's Day, so we had a big for the art walk in town. We had an opening with a lot of Guinness and glasses and fun for everybody. I'm gonna skip some of these because I have just a couple minutes left. Um, my, my partner hand, hand screened some topo print maps or print posters for the thing. And then we got contacted by the Maker Faire to present and contribute in a, in a Maker Faire with children. <laughs> and it was awesome. And I emailed him like three separate times to say, okay, so I can bring the gunpowder? I'm gonna ignite the gunpowder. It burns. But with that, we also got to let the kids use their own X-Acto knives to cut out stencils. And then we took their stencils that they made and let them blow them up. This is Chris, my partner, who, who did screen printing there, some of our uh, foundry shrag that we gave away. And so I replaced the bricks of, of Matt's work with a, some house plants, um, and then would put the kids', kids uh, stencils in there over paper. And you, you know what's gonna happen here, I think. <laughs> Eventually it goes, uh, does shoom. Um, and I, I tended to be fairly conservative with the gunpowder around the kids, but they got some great pictures, and these kids were super engaged. We must have had, you know, at least 25 to 30 kids who had got to cut out stencils and do gunpowder. My hands were just all black from gunpowder after the day, and this was right on the Oregon State University campus. Um, really fun. These kids got their little pictures they drew. And then after that, I mean, I was at the coffee shop going uh, 
to get coffee with my kid and there were kids behind me and I was like, that's the guy from the gunpowder thing. That was really cool. Um, so we got contacted by the library to do it over the summer um, in Corvallis. Uh, but if you want to hear more about it, talk to me. But you know, go out and do things with kids, map in weird ways. I've, this, one of these is from USGS to teach kids about contour lines. I love it on these uh, nested uh, salad covers. Do some balloon mapping. Um, that's it. I do have some of these posters from the map gallery left over if you guys want to come see me if anyone's interested in one after uh, at the break. That's it. Thanks, Nick. We have time for one question. Was the uh, technique with the, uh, were you forced to flow over, was that just a question of weight distribution on top? Yep, yep, it was either placing the bricks on one side or just making sure somehow the air, where the air was and the, the heat wanted to go was accessible. So yeah, that's exactly what it was. Thank you so much. Thanks.